What's up guys and welcome to episode 3 of this series on fruit. I'm totally enjoying making these videos. I'm happy because I never expected it. Anyway, in case you missed any of the videos in this series, check out the link to the full playlist in the description section below and be sure to watch through, preferably in chronological order. Alright, let's get started. But first, I want you to think about this. You must have heard of that phrase, eat lots of fruit and vegetables to reduce on your risk of getting cancer. It sounds true, right? Well, let's look at the research findings. I'll make it as quick and as simple as possible. While we do so, I'd like us to remember the food pyramid of 1992, which was conceptualized by the US Department of Agriculture, which gave the recommendation that adults should eat two to four servings of fruit a day. Oh, hell no! As I said in episode two, there was no concrete scientific evidence behind the magic number of two to four. I would also like us to remember that though fruit contains two types of sugar, glucose and fructose, only glucose was fairly understood by scientists by the end of the 20th century. It would only be in the early 21st century when the metabolism of fructose would be better understood and elucidated. But before we continue, if you're finding this series juicy like I'm finding it, okay. hit that subscribe button right about there, bottom right hand corner. All right, so let's dive in. Lots of research has been done around the topic of nutrition and how it relates to the risk of cancer. However, one particular study stands out. It's called the EPIC study. EPIC is short for European Prospective Investigation into Cancer and Nutrition. The study includes over 500,000 people, most of them aged between 35 and 70 years, recruited in 23 centers located in 10 European countries. Of significance to our discussion, the EPIC study analyzed the effect of three variables, fruit, vegetables, and fiber on cancer incidence and cause specific mortality for several decades. Enrollment took place between 1992 and the year 2000. This was after the food pyramid of 1992 and therefore should provide better data on the role of fruit in health. To date, EPIC represents the largest single resource worldwide for prospective investigations on the etiology or cause of cancer. For geeks like me, I'll leave a link to that study in the description section below. Let's look at the study findings as summarized in this table. Like me, I believe you'll find them interesting. But first, if you're finding value in this video, hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. Help us reach a thousand subs by the end of this month. Come on, the video is free. All right, so let's dive in. So quick orientation. As you can see, the first column represents the type of cancer while the second column is subdivided to represent the effect of increased intake of three variables, that is fruit, vegetables, and fiber on the different cancers. Increased intake of vegetables and fiber, A, reduce the risk of getting colorectal cancer. B, have no effect on upper gastrointestinal tract cancers. C, have no significant role, that is positive or negative, on the risk of other cancers. Increased intake of fruit, on the other hand, reduces the risk of getting A, colorectal cancer, B, upper gastrointestinal tract cancers, C, lung cancer, increases the risk of getting thyroid cancer, Increased intake of fruit, vegetables, and fiber have no significant role, positive or negative, on the risk of getting other cancers. However, I must say that the researchers noted that cessation of smoking had a more significant effect on reduction of the risk of lung cancer than increasing on fruit intake. So what are the take-home points? From this study, we see that 1. The benefit of eating fruit and vegetables to reduce the risk of getting cancer isn't as high as it has been portrayed. 2. Fruit reduces the risk of getting more cancers than vegetables do. However, fruit increases the risk of getting thyroid cancer in addition to other metabolic diseases like type 2 diabetes, gout, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This isn't true for vegetables. You see, in medicine, we always weigh benefit versus risk. The risk of eating large amounts of fruit far outweighs the proposed benefit of reducing on the risk of one or two cancers. Am I saying that you shouldn't eat fruit? No, I'm not. However, I will not over glorify fruit given the scientific evidence that has emerged with the onset of the 21st century relating to dangers of fructose or fruit sugar. The decision, however, is yours. Wait a minute. You. As a doctor, these would be my recommendations. 1. Opt for vegetables rather than fruit given that A. Both fruit and vegetables have vitamin C, vitamin E, other antioxidants and phytonutrients. B. The role of fruit and vegetables in cancer prevention is not as great as portrayed away from the science. C. Unlike fruit, there is no evidence that vegetables increase the risk of getting cancer or cause metabolic diseases mentioned before like type 2 diabetes, gout, and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. 2. Focus on reducing 
and or eliminating major and well-established causes of cancer and metabolic disease such as drinking excessive amounts of alcohol and smoking. All right, in the next video, we'll talk about the pros and cons of fruit and fructose. Question of the day, do you eat more fruit than vegetables or vice versa? Let us know in the comment section below. Be among the first 20 people to subscribe and leave a comment to enter a draw to qualify for six weeks access to our body transformation program where you lose fat, build muscle, and improve your health. Click here to watch other videos in this series, hit the subscribe button and turn on that notification bell to make sure that you don't miss out on any other upcoming video. Help us reach a thousand subscribers. Like for real, the video is free. What else do you want? Speak to you soon.